uh, there's a lot out there, and I just saw in the uh, Harvard Business Review, there's there's a lot of talk out there about meetings. Mm. And um, I go back and forth on my, my opinion of meetings. So this is kind of a, it's a multiple part question, but you can just give me your overall philosophy, um, you know, with your background and all the trainings you've done and working on efficiency and productivity and all those other things. Uh, just your overall meeting philosophy. Do you think that you should have regular meetings and check-ins? You know, a lot of people do these daily, you know, check-in with everybody in a group and then disperse. Um, you know, people do regular meetings every week that are two hours long and two hours is great. Um, just generally speaking, how do you feel about meetings with your with your teams? Well, I think you've got to have a reason to be meeting. So if you can't really define it, if you're just meeting to meet and you've got this meeting on the schedule that's been there for three years and it's reoccurring every two weeks, you have to kind of define why you're getting together. What's the purpose of it? Um, and again, I'll go back to what's in it for me because that's what people are thinking when they get to the meeting, right? What's going to be, what's going to be my benefit out of this meeting? Um, I will say that you know, there's, there's various kinds of meetings that you, you want to take into consideration. For instance, uh, a one-on-one -on -one with, with your manager, I think, is extremely helpful because it gives you the opportunity to really kind of work through issues. They might kind of, get, kind of tell you what's going on. You get to share what, what you're doing. And then there's some brainstorming and, you know, however you want to set that up. I think one of the critical things about that is that it doesn't get canceled. You know, it's something that is always going to happen. You know what's going to happen. And it's a very valuable meeting. Now, it doesn't have to go on. You know, if you schedule it for an hour and you've only got 45 minutes worth of stuff to talk about, that's fine. Um, but I think that that particular type of meeting, I think, is, is really critical and can be really helpful both to the manager and to the employee. Um, I think in terms of like a staff meeting, again, I think you have to know why you're meeting. Are you meeting to just provide information to people? Is that the best way to get that information across? Could that have been done, you know, if, if everybody on your team is a full-time team member and they've all got access to email and it's just something that you want to get to them, that's fine. You know, maybe you can email that out. You know, I think one of the funniest things I've seen out there is, is a banner that people have, you know, have, have been sharing that says, you know, I just went to a meeting that should have been an email kind of thing. Right. Um, yeah. So I think we have to really watch why we're having a meeting so that we can be respectful of people's time. If you want to get together with a group of people so you can brainstorm some ideas so that you can um, gather some suggestions from people, I think that's a great opportunity to do so. But at the same time, you should also prepare them for that. So you're not kind of walking in blind and saying, you know, I, don't, I don't know why we're meeting. I don't know. Adam called and said he wants to meet with us in an hour. Okay, great. Well, let's go meet. And then you want us to kind of dive into this real deep topic that I haven't had a chance to think about yet. So I'm probably not going to have a lot of, a lot of input right off the bat because people do need time to process those things. So um, if you are getting together to get suggestions from people, then you kind of have to prepare them first. Um, right. You know, in, in our industry, a lot, a lot of times people use kind of the, the daily stand-up meeting or the, the daily um, information download kind of thing. Um, and I think if they're short, if they're, again, respectful of people's time, if they're um, giving people information that they really need to know, um, then I think those, are, those can be very, very valuable. Um, the meetings that I don't think are valuable are the ones that are not run well. Um, by that, I mean the, the person running it doesn't have an agenda. They don't, they don't know how to kind of keep things on track. Even if they do have an agenda and you're two hours into the meeting and you notice that you're only on agenda number two or, you know, uh, item number two out of eight, your head's going to explode. So the meeting's got to be run well. It's got to have an, it's got to have a purpose. Um, you know, those are the kind of things that I think really go into, you have to take into consideration if you're going to have some sort of meeting with your staff. Um, and is this really the best use of their time? So those are some of the things yeah. I think about when I kind of think about meetings. Yeah, I agree. And I think that, you know, in some element, I've seen a, a shift in, in that mindset as well. You know, there, I think there was a time, at least uh, for me, where any meeting was a productive meeting. You know, you could go in there and you could sit for two hours, like you're saying, and just talk about the weather. And you walked out and you're like, okay, I had a two-hour meeting and that was great. But now there is such this onus on don't waste my time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, everybody's doing less with more or more with less, um, you know, and it's, it's – uh, it's interesting to see that mind shift of don't over schedule me. We've been here for 30 minutes. We could have been out 15 minutes ago. And like, as the meeting facilitator, 
um, there's such an element of feeling the room and that, mm-hmm. you know, if like is everybody engaged, is this productive? And if it's not, then yeah, stop wasting everybody's time. Don't be afraid to cut the meeting short. Say, okay, we'll see you guys next week or whatever. Um, and then follow up after that. And then to your point, then an art that I'm starting to get better at is knowing when to, when to move to the next agenda item, you know, and, and when it becomes, you know, off topic or maybe it, it's still somewhat on topic, but it's something that should be tabled either for a one-on-one discussion that somehow bred its way to the group, mm-hmm. or uh, you know, it's it's something that should require a follow-up discussion for that topic alone um, for the group. Uh, that that is because you you feel like if everybody's engaged and you're talking about the same thing, this is really great. But what you're really doing is you're you're using you know huge chunks of time and and staying to that schedule. Um, you know, is something that's it's tough to do sometimes because you feel like you got a really engaged group. So let's keep this going. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, you need to understand you have a, you know an in, a finite amount of time for your meeting, and you don't want to you know go 30, 45 minutes late just because you had an open dialogue there. You want to kind of keep it on schedule, follow up on it later. So that's good. That's good. I like. I appreciate the feedback. Took some good notes there. So. <laughs> My pleasure. Thanks for watching this episode of Leader Tips Q and A. If you liked what you saw, go ahead and hit the subscribe button so you can be notified when new episodes come out. If you have a question for me, or if you'd have a question that you'd like to see addressed on a future episode, go ahead and put it in the comments. Thanks for watching.